Paul George goes by a lot of names. Whether you call him PG-13, Playoff P, or MVPG-13. You just make sure you put some respect on his name. I ain't gonna say it no more. Let's get right to it. Da -na -na, da -na -na. What's happening, YouTube? It's Hush Boy, and you tuned in to Hush Boy Sports. And make sure y'all go to hushboysports.com. Pick you up a t-shirt. Show your boy some love. Appreciate everyone who already bought a t-shirt. Y'all just done bought up all the mediums. All of them. I ordered some more mediums as well as other sizes. They will be stocked up in the store very soon. Thank you, Hush Boy Nation. I appreciate it. All I see all over the internet is James Harden this, James Harden that, talking about he's the front runner to win back-to-back -back MVP awards. Now, I'm not saying James Harden ain't out there doing his thing, but Paul George been showing out here lately, too, so his name been creeping up in these MVP talks. And he deserves it, too. He deserves to have his name mentioned with the James Hardens, the LeBrons, the Giannis's. But I'm going to take it even a step further. If Paul George keeps playing the way he's playing now, he should be the MVP. And here's why. Not only does Paul George drop 30 for you on offense, he also guards the opposing team's best perimeter player on defense, night in and night out. And on this night in particular, the OKC Thunder took on the reigning MVP James Harden and the Houston Rockets. In the first half, the OKC Thunder found themselves down 26 points, and it didn't look like they had a snowball's chance in hell of coming back. But I know a man... <laughs> Woo! I say I know a man. His name is Paul George. Woo! I said I know a man. They call him Paul. I said they call him Paul. They call him Paul George. Mm, 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 mm. Good God. And that young man went into MVPG 13 mode. But I didn't come to yickety yak 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 your ear off. I can show you better than I can tell you. This is Hush Boy, baby. You know I got some receipts. Let's hop into this beautiful big footage, baby. Let's go. PG-13 let it be known from the jump that he's not going to shy away from this moment. Look at James Harden already pushing off. Paul George was ready for this moment, and he was all over James Harden like a baby mama looking for child support. Look at that steal. And then look at the dunk. <laughs> the Rockets knew PG-13 ain't nothing to play with, so they were running a lot of on-ball screens, trying to get Paul George to switch. Even when the Thunder were forced to switch, they were still containing Harden as well as you could a reigning MVP. OKC made it its main focus this past offseason to become a more positionless team. To play positionless basketball. And that's simply due to the fact that the whole league is running so many on-ball screens trying to force switches and exploit mismatches. So even if the Thunder were forced to make a switch, they could at least hold their own and make it difficult for Harden. I'm not saying they was out there shutting James Harden down, but what I am saying is they were just making it difficult for him. That's all I'm saying. You're not going to shut down a guy like James Harden. That's impossible. He's probably the most dangerous offensive player in the world right now. This man has scored at least 30 points in 30 plus games straight. The only other player to do that is Wilt the Stilt Chamberlain. You must understand that he's going to hit some shots. He's going to hit some difficult shots. He's going to hit some shots with your hand up in his face because he's James Harden. But you can't give up and you got to play every possession on defense like it's your last. If you do that, James Harden will still score 30. And that's all you can ask for. 
But if you don't do that and you give James Harden some easy looks all night long, he won't score 30. He'll score 60 or 70 on you. One thing I noticed while watching game film is that Harden is getting away with a lot of pushing off. Like I noticed him blatantly pushing off and the refs didn't call one offensive foul. Not one. Let's look at this push off one more time. Look at it right there. And the referee standing right there ain't said nothing. Houston went off in the second quarter, scoring 42 points and hitting seven threes. Harden hit three of those threes and scored 17 points in the second quarter. Houston was slowly running off with this game. And in my opinion, this play right here changed the game. Let's take another look at this play and take a close look at Harden's left elbow. Watch as it comes down on Paul George's neck. That's why Paul George was so upset. You think PG gonna get mad for nothing? PG didn't like this call at all. And he let the ref have a piece of his mind and he got a technical foul for it. And one thing you don't want to do is get PG-13 mad. No, sir. The Thunder went into the locker room at halftime down 22 points. Mm. It wasn't looking good at all. It was looking like all hope was lost. Whoa, but I know a man. In order to make a comeback like the Thunder made in this game, not only do you have to make shots, but you also have to string together defensive stops. And that's exactly what they did. They would get a stop, and then they would get a bucket. They would get a stop, then they would get a bucket. And it wasn't just one person out there playing defense. It truly was a team effort. I know this video is about PG-13, but you got to give the whole Thunder team some love for this defense right here. Look at them. They all over the place like bird shit. Watch that pick to your right, T-Ferg. Switch. PG got him. Time for lockdown. What you going to do, CP3? Right, where you think you going? Stop. Clank, clank. Now, Harden already known for pushing off, but this game was ridiculous. It seemed like every time he done his signature step back move, it was accompanied by an obvious push off. Look at the right arm right here. Look how he pushes Paul George off. Ref right there ain't called nothing. But did you think that stopped PG from playing hard defense? Mm-mm. He stayed up on him, smothering him. I'm talking about he was tight on him. Harden couldn't breathe. Clank, clank. Then late in the third quarter, PG-13 just went to, just went to sleep out there, just draining threes. Watch him use this Steven screen. Get open. You already know PG wetter than that thing. Now watch PG right here do a little quick check on Gerald Green's ankles to see where they at. They ain't ready. Now look at the step back. Skirt. PG hit him with it. And one. I'm not showing you this replay to show you PG celebrating. I'm showing you to show you this fan right here. Look how he dropped his head. He knew it was over. A combination of good defense and offense led to the Thunder outscoring the Rockets 40 to 20 in the third quarter. The Rockets also went one for 10 from the three point line. Clank, clank. The Thunder, on the other hand, went seven for 12 from the three point line. That's right, I said it. Selm, not seven. Selm. And they continued to shoot it well from the perimeter in the fourth quarter. Look at PG, look at the jab, 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 jab. jab. Hit him with it. Ah. Hall of Fame corner specialist badge. Activate. Whoop bam And James Harden continued to push off. Look at the right arm. But the Thunder defense didn't let up at all. They kept harassing Harton, trying to make it as difficult as possible for him to get a good look at the basket. I'm not sitting here saying they were shutting James Harden down. He was still out there scoring buckets. This is James Harden we're talking about. But what I am saying is, is that the Thunder was just able to stay in front of him and keep a hand in his face. And when it came down to crunch time in this game, the Thunder were in striking distance. And as a visiting team on the road, that's all you can ask for. A chance to win the game. 
And this is the time when they began to bear down on defense. I mean, they got extra thirsty out there, but they were being disciplined at the same time. At this very moment, the vision that Sam Presti had in the offseason was becoming crystal clear to me. The Thunder truly are a positionless team. Every time the Thunder would switch on defense, the defender still prevented the offensive player from scoring. There were no mismatches for the Rockets to exploit. Therefore, the Thunder were able to make some plays on defense and stop the Rockets. Even when the Rockets were inbounding the ball, down three, with three seconds to go, the Thunder defense showed up again. Steven deflects the inbounds pass, causing Gerald Green to mishandle the pass and make a turnover. Clank, clank! Defense wins games! MVPG13 ended up finishing this game with 45 points, 12 of 22 shooting from the field, 6 of 14 shooting from the three, 15 of 18 shooting from the line, 11 rebounds, 3 assists, and a steal. Good God. Don't get me wrong. I'm not sitting here saying that Paul George should be the clear favorite to win the MVP. I mean, I obviously have a biased opinion. But this is what I am saying, though. You're going to have to put some respect on Paul George's name. People are always talking about James Harden is unstoppable. He's the most dangerous offensive player today. He's the greatest one-on-one -on -one basketball player of all time. Stop it. Let's compare the two, shall we? Well, bam. What if I told you that Paul George has a higher field goal percentage and a higher three-point percentage than James Harden? Hmm? Hmm? But here's the kicker. Check out the plus-minus. Let me break that down a little bit more for y'all because maybe y'all didn't understand what I just said. What does plus minus mean in basketball? Here it is right here. Well, bam! Plus minus or PM. The PM stat is the plus minus and reflects how the team did while that player is on the court. If a player has a plus 5 PM, it means his team outscored the opponent by 5 points while he was on the court. If he has a minus 3, then the opposing team outscored his team by 3 points while he was on the court. So now do you understand the plus minus stat? The Thunder are outscoring their points 466 points when PG out there on the floor. Good God. Now raise me up from the dead. Now you tell me that ain't no MVP numbers. Paul George also leads the league in steals. But James Harden right behind him. And Harden has more blocks than PG. We call it down the line here at Hush Boy Sports. But the Thunder are 2-1 and one this season versus the Rockets. And you can go ahead and mark your calendars right now. Because their next matchup is on April the 9th in OKC. And I believe if PG-13 continues to play at the level that he's playing right now, and when they do get to that game, if he shuts Harden down and drop about 50 on them, he just might be MVP G-13 for real, for real. I'm sure PG wants to win that MVP award. I'll be rooting for you. We'll all be rooting for you. But you know what PG wants to win more than that MVP award? MVP of the finals. We trying to get a championship here in OKC. Now, if PG happens to get an MVP on the way to us getting that championship, that's just a cherry on top. That's the end of this video. Hope you guys liked it because I sure did like making it. You did like it. Make sure you hit the like button for your boy, man. Show me some love. While you at it, you might want to go ahead and subscribe to me too, man. Because as you can see, I'm working. Sonny, boom. Follow me on Instagram. Call me. In the meantime, in between time.
Y'all be cool, like y'all be cool, man. This is Hush Boy. Don't forget to go to hushboysports.com. Get you a shirt. Drinking and I'm out with this thing, man. Drinking nigga bombs and go. 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 Oh, the guy was the commode. Drinking nigga bombs and go. Drinking nigga bombs and go. Drinking nigga bombs and go. Oh, the guy was the commode.